readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about our top threes of 2021. I know it was a long time ago. It seems like almost a year ago now, but we never did it. So we're really looking forward to talking about what our top 10 of 2021 were. I had a few rules, so not including rereads. I limited it to one per author because half of this list would be Jabba Crombie for me otherwise. And also didn't put any Papa Gwyn there because we could be considered biased, but he would definitely be in there. So... Yeah, wait, let's just wait, get... he did pay us 20 quid to put it in this video. Well, we better show these off then. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> worth 20 pounds? I reckon so, yeah. Right, right then, let's get into the video then. So, Ed, you want to kick us off with your 10th favourite read of 2021? 2021 was a great year for reads of fantasy, historical fiction and everything mm -hmm. else. Now, you might have to help me lift this one up, Will, but... <laughs> oh, this is Priest of Gallows by Peter McLean. Would you be able to hold it for me, please? Thank oh. you. Oh, now, Peter McLean is a great guy. We've actually been very lucky enough to interview him on the channel, I know. I'm I just going to pin it to the back here it. so it stays. That's a good idea. Oh, nice. Uh, but yeah, so Peter McLean's a great guy. Priest of Gallows is book three of The War of the Rose Throne, and it is fantastic. There is a, so much atmosphere in these books. It is the third of a quartet so uh, we cannot wait for priest of crowns but yeah i'm so excited for the fourth release this was a favorite of mine because of the amazing atmosphere that peter mclean created as well as the i mean it, you've got to be honest the very peaky blinders nature of the characters yeah uh, as well as the twists and the turns that you just can't help but love and hate at the same time and hate in a very good way because <laughs> these books make you feel very passionate there there are some outstanding character work um, and the action set pieces just enhance the story so much. There is not a single layer of fat in these stories. It is so eloquently told, um, and they are just so much fun. Although you might yeah. not feel like, oh, this is a romp, like Kings of the Wild, that kind of thing. You just can't help but be sucked in and enjoy the tale as it as it uh, unfolds before you. So, yeah, thank you, Peter McLean, for a great book, and that is number 10 on my Yeah, list. really looking forward for that series concluding, although he, when we had an interview with him, didn't sound like it's going to yeah, be happy. Yeah, I'm a bit worried. Maybe I don't want to read the last one. Now on to my 10th favourite read of 2021, and that is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. So this won the Booker Prize. The second in the series won the Booker Prize as well. So she's won the joint most Booker Prizes in history. Wow. And so this is set at in the very, very early Tudor 16th period. century. Nice. Yeah, the early Tudor period. We follow someone called Thomas Cromwell who rises from quite low in society, he goes and fights abroad, makes some money, and he's very clever. And he rises up in society to eventually becoming a huge part of politics and the way events unfold with Henry VIII and um, his somewhat controversial multiple wives sort of thing where he changed the entire church and entire culture of England. Oh, Pretty substantially. <laughs> and uh, Thomas Cromwell was at the heart of that. So this was... Um, it's a very different type of read. This is one I absolutely adored it, but it's one I had to take in chunks. It's not one that you can just, oh my goodness, I have to read this in one sitting. It's one where I read 50 pages and I was like, what just happened? Um, and it just gives you so much food for thought. And it's one of those that uh, probably when I read it, I loved it, but I didn't think this is going to be one of my top 10 of 2021. But you, when you, something is quite a few months on and it's the seats, uh, scenes still jump out at you and you remember it so clearly, you know this is a brilliant read and I think of it with such passion now. And I really need to read the second in the series. And, well, it's just a masterpiece. It's, it's when um, people like myself and Ed want to be authors and then we read someone with a prose and uh, quality like Hilary Mantel, it just makes me think... You'll never be this good. Thanks for the support, Ed. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Wolf Hall was brilliant. We will never be this good. <laughs> <way. laughs> the next one for me, number nine on my list, is The Counselor by E.J. Beaton. Um, this is a fantastic book. It's one that I wasn't too sure about picking up at first because I was like, hang on, it doesn't really sound like my usual thing, which is uh, very political-based fantasy. Um, but this is great. It's absolutely fantastic. The, and what I love about fantasy and books in general are when the characters are at the forefront, much like Priest of Gallows by Peter McLean. Um, the characters here play such a centre um, role and it is brilliant. It's so much fun. Uh, I love the dynamics between all the different characters. It is kind of, you know, a bit of a mystery where you're finding out who assassinated who uh, and for what reasons, that kind of thing. And you just can't help but 
enjoy um, being kind of just sucked in by this tale. I keep saying that, don't I? It's, it's your the, favourite one. These books are like hoovers at the moment. Um, terrible. But, or vacuums, actually, they're called. Oh, that's they? quite yeah, nice. Not, yeah. nice um, but anyway, so, yeah, <laughs> it, The Counselor is great because it covers so many different things in fantasy that we love, you know, like great characters, fantastic dialogue and scenes between people, mystery, and there are two action set pieces here that are just used to perfection. Um, and I really can't wait for, to read the second one, which is, I think it's a duology, isn't it? I think it is. I, I yeah. like the sound of a duology. Yeah, I think Daniel Green said that in a recent video, didn't he? Yeah, it? and duology. it made me think of it. Duology. duology. Sounds so nice, it doesn't it? It does sound pretty cool. So, yeah, uh, hats off to EJ Beaton. Um, the Council is a fantastic book. And what a lovely cover as well. You should go mm -hmm. check it out, because even though political-based fantasy isn't the thing I go to, I'm a bit more of a military um reader there you know this absolutely just knocked my socks off good job i was wearing shoes that is good indeed <laughs> now number nine for me is a monster calls by patrick ness this is a lovely illustrated edition in one of our previous videos i said i stole this off papa gwyn and i've still not given it back so <laughs> this is <laughs> ed has practiced his golem impression over many a year <laughs> so <laughs> Now, moving on with Gollum next to me now. It'll be Gollum's top 10 uh, books of 2021. But anyway, so this is... It, be a good video. it would be a good video. This is said to be <laughs> children slash teen literature, but uh, it's one that is a bit like Neil Gaiman, where it is also very um, accessible to adults as well. And I'd say that probably adults or people around my age, so just beyond the teens. Um, well, it feels weird to say that. Yeah, I'm getting older. Good old um, days, so I I feel like it, people like that um, around that demographic would prefer this actually because it's got a very deep emotional um, base to it, which I think drives the entire story. It's um, it's very hard hitting. It's about a boy who's about twelve, thirteen, and his mother has cancer, and it's about how they cope with it together. About how he processes his thoughts of what is going to happen. There's a lot of denial, anger, a lot of the different stages of grief as well. And um, so, yeah, you have to be in a certain mind frame when you go into reading this, but it's it's just masterful and it made me cry. It's executed so well. I think there's a lot of books that when it's got it's that emotionally charged, I think that it's very easy to fall a bit short. It, it feels like the author often feels like, okay, I need this scene to be really emotional and they push it too far. But Patrick Ness, he knows when to let it go and it's just exceptional talking to one that everyone should read is golden sun book two of the red rising saga by pierce brown um so if you think red rising book one was like hunger games but um a bit more spacey then you're probably correct um but if you think golden sun is in the similar vein then you are utterly incorrect because this couldn't be farther from uh book one at all because this is grim dark just personified isn't it bookified if you are especially that ending um oh the ending the, the this is where pierce brown really kind of you know steps up head and shoulders above lots of other writers where um he pulls you in and you get really attached to great characters and then he utterly destroys them in front of your weeping eyes so it's pretty cool um but yeah god with sun to read book two it's there's lots of action um the set pieces are great the betrayals and the the kicks really hurt in your heart and you're like uh, utterly appalled at what's <laughs> unfolding before your eyes um, the the narrating was great um tim gerald reynolds I reynolds think. Yes. Um, lovely irish voice um which is really cool enhanced the book definitely but um yeah i mean it, it is a little bit like well i don't know it's a very accessible sci-fi isn't it but it's yeah. got fantasy elements that doesn't make it feel like you're reading like a superly charged sci-fi yeah book, it is sci-fi but it feels like it's in a fantasy world kind of thing. and it feels it's real. just set in the future yeah, but exa yeah, exactly yeah exactly it's um, more fun because it's very um kind of a lot of the classical references isn't it yeah, i was and gonna say i love all the all the references to classical literature and, and ancient culture, Rome, ancient Greece. exactly yeah so um but but it it's a very it's, it's lots of classes in this you know you've got the golds which are kind of the top of society the reds that are different and, and whatnot so people are kind of classified by their colors rather than who they are as people and you know that's kind of a key theme i think mm -hmm. of the of yeah. the series so yeah it's a trilogy i think there's another three books out well another two books out a sequel and trilogy a sequel trilogy and then and then the last book mm -hmm. is yet to be released yeah. but well, i'm really excited to try those uh, that trilogy because this is great uh, let me just look after that for you you sh shouldn't put it over there next up 
for me is The Hand of the Sun King by JT Great House. This was one of my last reads alongside The Monster Calls, actually. Um, it was one of the last reads of 2021, so I had a great end of the year in terms of reading. And this is fantasy. Again, it was a debut, I believe, JT Great House. Mm -hmm. And so this is about basically a clash of cultures where a boy is raised with his mother and her side of the family being um, of a country and culture which is being destroyed basically by his father's side of the family. Well, they're, they're not in charge, but they're from a country, a bit like Rome, basically. Oh, it's bad news. Borders, it is a bit mean, but um, empires overall, really, aren't they? Yeah, that's true. They are mean. And so this is basically, it's a, it's a lot about identity. It's a bit like, you know, um, if you know the Saxon stories, Uhtred of Bemenberg, that son one of the Uhtred, driving... Son of Uhtred, son of Uhtred. I think you've left out on each road. But so it, one of the driving forces of that is Saxon or Dane. Which side is it going to go with? And it's similar in this, that it's really well done exploring that I, that um, conflict conflict of identity. Exactly. I was looking for that word. Thank yes. you. Ed. Yeah, this is why we're a duo on we here. We finish each other's sandwiches. Don't eat my sandwiches. Ed would get very angry. But yeah, so it's about a conflict of identity and it's done really well. It's a very interesting magic system. And I think... For a debut, the prose and how smooth it is, is it's really brilliant and it really took me by surprise and yeah, I love it. Cool. Hence why it's on the list. And the next one for me, what number is this now, Will? Is that your... I don't know. Could be. Might be. Eighth or seventh. Eighth or seventh. This is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Now, William was like, said, when he read this, he was like, Ed, you, you need to read this book. And I was like, yeah, do I? I've got so many other books to read. I think I'm going to just leave it a bit. And he was like, you know, the next day, Ed, you need to read this book. And, you know, a few weeks go past and he was, you know, waking me up by shaking me and throttling me saying, you need to read this book. So I did. I'm and not crazy. It's incredible. It's so good. It is an absolutely thunderstorm of a read. Um, it just sweeps you up mm. and then it drags you along. It doesn't pull you along. It utterly drags you uh, along in this book because the plot is so fast paced. The characters, they're always doing something that progresses the plot in such an aggressive manner. Mm. Um, and it is, it's just an unstoppable force, whether it's the character, the action, the plot and everything else in between. The prose is so easy to digest. Um, the plot is great fun. And it, 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 I love how diverse this read is as well, because it's got characters of all sorts of personalities, as well as a great culture that, that Evan Winter has drawn on mm. here, which is just so rare in fantasy. I've read uh, Imaro, which is kind of a sword and sorcery, uh, African-inspired fantasy, which was a lot of fun because it just get, adds extra points from having that uh, originality and authentic kind of style, doesn't it, really? Yeah. And the, and well, the, we, the we, we read mostly Western based Exactly. Medieval. And it, it is, do you know what? It, it, I know lots of people said, but it's so much fun to dive into another world because it does feel like it's so different to you know, its predecessors. And, you know, Evan Winter's character Tau here is like, Maximus Decimus Meridius meets Matt Quinn, I say, uh, and he is just on a one man mission. And it, it's but just it's really so believable good. as well. It's utterly it? believable. You know, I don't know why it says um, Game of Gladiator meets Game of Thrones on, I think it says this on the paperback. There's nothing like Game of Thrones whatsoever, it's just that it's, it has I fantasy, think that's just that everyone. It, it is like Gladiator, yeah. it does feel like Gladiator. And, and you know, if you like Red Rising, I would definitely check this oh, out. Oh, and the because, arena sequence. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So, so good. There's amazing stuff here. Evan Winters is a great writer, a great person as well. So cheers for that read. And the next book I have up is... Uh, all right, I wasn't trying to put the book in a nicer yeah. place. I needed it for my list. So Golden Sun for me, this is, a, as Ed said... I oh, you said everything. You stalled and everything. That's what I do. <laughs> I am the This eldest. is the second book in the trilogy and it is brilliant basically. Um, I really said. loved it. So Red Rising I enjoyed and it's kind of that Hunger Games-esque but a bit more of an adult version but I didn't love it. I thought it was really good and it was mm. enough to carry on with the series and this was incredible. It's completely different from the first in the series but in a way that it does link really nicely and it's just this character he is being taken to the next level where it's not that it's a different genre. It's that you have to mature now. Yeah. You're in the next level, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah he levels up. And but he's the, not OP, is he? No, he's not. He Sometimes he is, but um, there are plenty of people who can destroy him. Yeah. And the politics in this really just escalate and become it's exceptional, I think. It's one that probably oh, maybe the best sci-fi I've ever read. 
Uh, and the next one for me is Kings of the World by Nicholas Ames. It's a fantastic read this. I mean, I'm, everyone's pretty much heard of this one. Um, that it is, you know, like feel good fantasy again, um, which is great to read. It's got that classic feel. I've read a lot of sword and sorcery lately. It definitely feels like a D and D kind of quest. Um, and it's got the, the the this band of old friends. They're kind of has beens, old timers, grey hair, uh, and they they're so much fun to read. Their their banter together is great, and you know, they're on a very simple quest. But it takes them through a very rich world. That is, I mean, it's rich in creatures and, and not not really too rich in lore. Is it? it doesn't spend too much time world building. But there are certainly I say some great world aspects. building as such, but maybe not lore. Yeah, exactly. So there's there are some great aspects of the world here because it's it it's it feels fresh, even though it's not fresh, because, you know, this is all about, extra, you know, all these different types of creatures and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's been done before, but here it's been done in a modern, new approach, which is great. It's kind of like what David Gemmell did for the, the heroic fantasy genre, um, giving it a bit more of a modern touch. And, mm. and Nicholas Ames is definitely doing that here as well. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, the humour's great. Lots of kind of musical references as well, if you like your, your old rock. Um, and yeah, it's... It, Again, it's just bags of fun. Lots of people say, uh, and what does Dad say? A rollicking page turning edge of your seat road trip of a book. And, and Dad is always right. Couldn't have summed it up better, Dad. <laughs> so cheers. Here's to Papa Gwyn. And there's a lot of emotion in it as well on top of the humour. Yeah, it did make me cry. And next for me is Evan Winter cropping up again. Ed said I was obsessed with the Rage of Dragons. I was also obsessed with the Fires of Vengeance. So mm -hmm. this is the second of his series. The Burning. Uh, I'm just, I can't wait to read the third. The Lord got of to Demons. the point where William, you know, we would have breakfast and then he would go into his room and he would come out holding two swords and he would go, I am Tao. And then he'd <laughs> Tao, I think Tao is exceptional. I've had some people say that it, it gets a bit much how angry he is, but um, without saying spoilers, <laughs> I think that if someone did what has been done to him and people he cares about, you'd be pretty angry. And I think that it is good showing that, um, but you don't agree with him and he often... He's he is quite selfish that he's just wants vengeance, mm -hmm. vengeance, vengeance. Often Clue in the title. to the neglect of his friends and those who he should be looking after at the same time. But it's done in such a way that I think allows for a lot of character growth, uh, allows for a lot of conflict. So everything wasn't just resolved in book one, and I think it just shows that it has absorbed his life. That this has taken his life away. That he may win some battles and lose others, but really it's just a loss, and it's. it's it's pretty tragic, but it's really emotionally compelling, and the stakes have gone up. So yeah, that's the fires of vengeance. I think yeah, we is this your last one for the video My now? Last one, and today the last one for me is by none other himself, Cormac McCarthy. Twenty twenty two is going to be the year of Cormac McCarthy because he has two books coming out, doesn't he? Like a month um, apart. Oh, they? like a month apart, and I cannot wait. So I guess we'll be reading that hopefully early on the channel. That'll be. Incredible, that wouldn't would it? be incredible. Hopefully, some net galley. But anyway, no country for old men. Oh, I had to read this because I was in a bit of a Cormac McCarthy phase. Um, and you know, surprise, he is the surprise. king. I watched the film of this as well. And I watched the film before I read the book, and I was like, "This is the worst." Oh no, no, it was so funny. So watching it, us and Papa Gwyn and uh, Ed was like, "This is brilliant. It's one of the best things I've ever seen." And then a certain grim dark scene happens. <laughs> yeah, um, and so it was a scene before that we had a break, and then after that scene, literally five minutes later, looks over at, um, at Ed, and he was going, "Oh, this is rubbish, isn't it?" <laughs> So you are, you are a bit of a Disney person then, but that's all changed. Look, uh, my favourite bits of The Lord of the Rings are whenever I was happy in the Shire. Needless to say, no one smiles once in this book. Um, the villain, Anton Chigar, <laughs> is... not really call my McCarthy for laughs. Truly, yeah. <laughs> truly fantastic. He's such a good villain. Up there with Judge Holden in Blood Meridian mm. at his very mm. best. So I, I love this book. It's, I mean, you can tell it was written as a screenplay first, I believe. Um, it's very stripped back of prose, but that is Cormac McCarthy's style. It's wow, got his great, style changes. For it's true, book, but he's got it? great, um, great twists and turns, characters that just have some fantastic dialogue and fantastic uh, kind of, you know, these scenes and these monologues that really are thought provoking and just fantastically intense monologues, which are great. Um, and the set pieces in this are brilliant. It's a very, very short book. It's a very quick read. Uh, and it's one of my favourite books to have on my bookshelf. I love the cover and I love this hardback edition. So, yeah, it's a superb book. It is indeed. And last for me in this video is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. So, I love normal people. I really enjoy conversation with friends. And I really loved Beautiful World, Where Are You? I'd probably say Normal People is my favourite of her books. This is in the middle. Conversation with friends just below. And... 
so this is it's just about people basically isn't it and the relationships we follow four people two girls two boys um and there is their relationship together basically and as we said in a previous video sally rooney is just possibly the greatest author at exploring the interactions between people in a contemporary circumstance mm -hmm. contemporary period and it's just done so well where they've got huge flaws and they're explored to the full but you you're still rooting for them and you see both sides from that they're the things that make them amazing people and the things that that their faults as well and it's just really exceptionally well done and Sally Rooney she always brings tears to my eyes she's got to stop it's, it's too much it's not fair really, it's not yeah. fair and yeah. she's hit home with a third brilliant book which just shows that she is possibly probably I'd say one of the greatest living writers yeah I'd say that whoa whoa hold the so day. yes so that is all yeah that ends our bit. video for today so thank you everyone for watching watch out for part two which, which comes out in a few days which is our top top books the ones that made the very top of the list and a few honorable mentions as well so keep your eyes peeled for that one hopefully you watch it and you enjoy that let us know what books you loved reading last year do you kind of keep tabs of your favourite books of the year? Are you sad like us and like to make, you know, your top 10 lists and all that kind of stuff? Do you feel like you're in Watch Mojo and Extra? Um, but let us know in the comments below. We look forward to seeing you guys there. Everyone take care. Truth and courage from the Brothers Gwyn. The Brothers Gwyn. <laughs>